drive players is a little portion of Fats Waller's handful of keys uh, that makes use of a certain uh, piano figure that I always like to call collapsing thirds or collapsing fourths, where um, you would have, you create a figure out of a major or minor third on the keyboard <clears throat> by going beyond the third and you go down a note or two and you go up a note or two and you have here a, um, a raised fourth or flatted fifth that collapses on to a third. You can also do this uh, with a uh, uh, with a perfect fifth collapsing onto a fourth And there are many other variations of, uh, uh, of this, but this is a very common one and one that you can, uh, if you understand the, the principle behind it, uh, that you can make good use out of. Uh, the, uh, there's two contrasting styles of piano playing from the 1920s that uh, make use of, uh, of this particular figure. One, the novelty piano style, uh, people um, that uh, wrote some very tricky what we call novelty piano pieces which were closer to ragtime with some of the stride like figures uh, people like Zez Confrey and Roy Bargy and, and uh, many others uh, use this uh, collapsing third and fourth for example Zez Confrey's Kitten on the Keys In that style, uh, it sounds very raggy because the uh, um, uh, the rhythms are all very strict and everything. Uh, it's uh, it's not swinging like in the stride style. It's more like a ragtime piece. Whereas if you take the same figure and change it just a little bit. Um, and put it in a swing stride style with a stride bass, you get the, uh, the Fats Waller version. And uh, the primary difference, of course, being the element of uh, rhythmic fluidity, if I could say that, uh, that leads to the swinging sound uh, being the difference between the and, so that's just something to keep in mind it's something that you can practice and uh, see if you can get it working for you